this is probably going to sound like catty or petty, but I'm just going to say it because I heard Simone Biles say something and it really stuck with me. She was talking about how journalists and people on the internet would comment on her hair while she was like these just irrelevant things, you know, when they, she was like, and they can't even do a cartwheel. And it got me into this line of thinking about people commenting on things when they don't even have any idea what they're talking about and how that relates so much. I'm sure everybody else can, can relate. Um, I do consults all the time, as you can imagine, and it never ceases to amaze me what people say to me. People that are reaching out who have dogs that are either they perceive that they're having problems or when I get on consult with them, I realize that they're just really shitty at management and would probably not be doing very well with children either. That's not a judgment. That's just an observation. Um, and drawn from a bit of anecdotal evidence and that I have a lot of. So when someone who is struggling with dogs that are getting in fights wants to argue with me about whether or not slip leads are aversive when I have said nothing about slip leads, like I would never suggest that someone use a tool that they're not comfortable with. I think it's a, a ethical decision and it's a cost benefit analysis on which tool that you use. Um, and so I recommend tools that I'm comfortable with, and then people will use the tools that they're comfortable with. I only recommend a certain number of tools because I only use a certain number. And then other people can, that doesn't mean they can't. That doesn't mean they can't use a harness. They don't, people don't have to use the level that I'm using for leverage, which is a slip lead. It's plain and simple. But when somebody says to me, well, you know, I could argue that a slip lead is aversive. I, being me, want to reach through the phone and slap the shit out of y'all when you do that. So my point in all of this is that if you want to get into the nuanced details of dog training, it helps to start in conversation with other folks. It helps to start with a, you know, in a good place with your own dog and that reminds me of recovery. Oftentimes when we go into recovery, our sponsor will say something to us like, please don't speak for 30 days. Just, just listen. Because everything you have to say is still part of the fucking problem because you just stopped drinking. So listen, just come here and listen. And soon you're going to develop some thoughts over time and that will give you a perspective and I would love and so would the group to hear that. But right now, you can talk to me. I'm here for you. If you need something, call a bitch. But the group is here to heal and we don't want to hear you talk about your problems. That's what I'm that's what I'm for. And I'm starting to recognize that we're using the group as our sponsor. That's not what we're supposed to be doing. The group is just community for us to have fellowship. But a trainer, a coach, a mentor, that's the person that helps you deal with the bulk of the things that you need to recover or work on because they're able to have close relationship with you. And that's what it takes to help somebody with something like that, right? You can't just give them a tip and then they're going to change. Otherwise, I would have a fat ass. I'll leave you with that thought.